Baptist comes over after a very successful tenure at Memphis. And he's got Florida State two and four with the conference win against to it today as Parker Grothaus is going to kick it away. And DJ Turner is deep, averaging 20 and a half yards of return. And this will be Turner working across the 15 and just shy of the 20-yard line before he got knocked back. So here comes Kenny Pickett, Roddy, out of Ocean Township High School, Oakhurst, New Jersey, fifth all-time in passing yards at Pittsburgh, sixth all-time in total offense, and seven games with 300 yards or more in his career. Yeah, that 277 yards per game passing puts him third in the ACC, and there was a lot of talk coming into the season about where Kenny Pickett was in terms of the hierarchy of quarterbacks in this league. His play this year has been outstanding, and it's good for Pittsburgh fans to see him back out on the field taking the first snaps. Panthers want to run the ball. They're 13th of the league, 93rd nationally, and under 100 yards a game. They'll flip it to Turner on the first play. The ball got knocked away and loose around the 18, and let's see how they sort it out. Recovered. By Turner, perhaps it'll be second down. Yeah, with the rain that we showed earlier, you know it's a little slick out there on the field. DJ Turner just gets it flipped out to him. He's got the ball on the wrong arm. You want the ball near the sideline. Florida State wow. was able to keep it in, but it looked like it may have hit that line. Either way, Pitt dodges Pitt dodge a bullet. Looked like Janarius Robinson might have had a crack at it. The previous play of a fumble is under further review. All right, and this is referee Riley Johnson, who we hear from after the opening snap of the ball game. So they, they'll go under review, and we'll step aside early, 36 seconds in at Tallahassee. Well, after review, the call on the field was confirmed, so the second down play is next here in Tallahassee for Pat Narduzzi's team. Second down and 11. And you see Vincent Davis alongside Kenny Pickett. Three receivers in the set, no hand to Vincent Davis. And he gets back to the 20. And looked like Emmett Rice was the first guy there. It's going to want to find some way to run the football today, particularly with Kenny Pickett, who does so much with his legs being a little banged up. Going with tempo here on third down. Third down and nine. Pickett downfield. Ball's caught, breaking away. Jared Wayne into Florida State territory inside the 35. It's a fantastic job on the play call by Mark Whipple, the offensive coordinator for Pitt. Going with tempo, went with a bunch set. You had an out by Jordan Addison and a corner route by Jared Wayne. He is wide open. Kenny Pickett delivers it, and it's a big conversion for Pitt. Here's Pickett, first and 10. Pittsburgh trying to drive it early here and overthrows Wayne. Does Pickett, it'll be second down and 10. Uh, Rocky, tell me about Kenny Pickett through these first few snaps yeah, from the sideline. Yeah, I was able to watch him during warm-ups, and he has a pretty significant brace on that left ankle, as you can see. All during warm-ups, he looked good throwing the football. Never once did I see him run or even jog at all, and obviously, guys, that's maybe the best part of his game is his ability to scramble and extend plays, so that's something to watch, his ability to run here the rest of this game. Looks like he's got the full box of tape on it, too, right? <laughs> That's right. Second down in 10, and Vincent Davis can't get going because Robert Cooper, a big 91 at 332 pounds, was in there to beat him to the spot. Pitt has really struggled to run the ball all season, Wes, and the girth that FSU has up front is going to make it really tough. Robert Cooper, Corey Durden there in the middle, both over 315 pounds. Now another third long for Pitt. And they're playing without the All-America candidate Marvin Wilson today. Pick it on third and 11. Loads downfield and will overthrow the intended receiver. That's the freshman Jordan Addison. 
man-to-man -man coverage across the board with the free safety in the middle of the field. They had Asante Samuel one-on-one -on, -one on the other side. And so Kenny Pickett opts to go to the slot. Just a little overthrown. And looks like Pitt's going to try a long field goal here. Yep. Alex Kessman, of course, who hit from 58 at Boston College. We'll try this from 51 yards. Cristadulo holds. And the kick by Kessman is away. And good. Another 50-plus field goal for Kessman. This one is 51 and puts Pittsburgh on the board. Absolutely drilled that one. There was, that was a no-doubter. Right down the middle. Kessman with confidence. And he had room to spare, Wes. That might have been good from 61. Well, I tell you this. You see the 58-yarder against Boston College. That thing might have been able to go five more yards <laughs> you know, against the Eagles that night. And then here he hits 51 yards, and it's a seven-play, 49-yard drive in two minutes and 22 seconds. And now he's got 10 field goals of 50 yards or more in his career. So good news for Alex Kessman. Good news for Pitt, Roddy, to get a field goal to start. Yeah, they're, it's a little concerning. They weren't able to get much going outside of that long pass to Jared Wayne. So it's a little concerning. How are they going to be able to move the ball? But certainly getting points is how you want to start off the game. Jay Sean Corbin, who's got a 21-yard kick return to his credit this year, is deep along with uh, Ja'Kai Douglas. And a touch of the knee means that Florida State will start from its 25, and they welcome back Tamari and Terry into the lineup here, Roddy. And they certainly do. One of the best receivers in the conference when he's on the field and healthy. He's been out the last couple of games, but the bye week, another guy who got healthy during that bye week. And with the amount of man-to-man -man defense that Pitt's going to play on the back end, they are going to look to find one-on-one -on -one matchups to get Tamari on Terry some opportunities. Three receivers at tight end. Orbiting, that's Wilson. Travis on first down, hands the ball to Jashawn Corbin, Jay Sean Corbin, who we talked of a moment ago, and he's out to nearly the 40-yard line. 15-yard run for Corbin. And you get a puller coming around, just opens up a massive hole for Jay Sean Corbin. Travis tries to buy time and now uses his feet to get toward midfield. Wes, this is a vaunted Pittsburgh defense uh, that, that Jordan Travis is going to be up against, and his legs are going to be a big part of this game. Talked about it in the open. His electricity, when he has the ball in his hands, has really given this offense a major boost. They've struggled on the offensive line at times, but his ability to run covers up a lot of that. The throw is over the top and incomplete, and it was almost intercepted by Eric Hallett. was one of the late breaking developments West Jason Pinnock the starting corner for Pitt is out for this game so Eric Hallett gets the start and he's got an opportunity to pick this thing off just barely off the fingertips on some miscommunication between Tamari on Terry and Jordan Travis FSU fortunate on that one third down in five the Seminoles hitting 38 percent of their third downs 11 of their last 30 coming in Travis middle of the field and that's Cameron McDonald, the tight end. His 16th catch of the year and a first down. Jordan Travis opts to go to the nub side to go to the tight end right up the seam. Just a little inside bender. He's able to catch the ball, get downfield for a big first down. Jordan Travis has looked sharp so far in this game with the exception of the miscommunication, the scramble, and that throw right there. He has been on it early on. And there is a player shaken up on the play, Devontae Love Taylor, the young man who transferred into this program out of Florida International, has come up hobbling, and they're tending to him. And you see Coach Norvell with the black shirt on, visiting with the grad transfer as they check him out. He started the last three at left tackle, and they had him over on the right side today. We'll take a break. In. You see Chaz Surratt crashing down. You see Taman Fox. He's got his eyes on him. 
Fox goes too far in. Jordan Travis pops to the outside. He's able to make a couple guys miss and gets up the seam. That's what Jordan Travis brings to this offense that they didn't have with any of the other quarterbacks. Uh, Florida State gets into their depth here a little bit in the offensive line. Robert Scott's come in to play the right side. Here is Tamari and Terry's first reception on a first and ten play. And good to see the Redshirt Jr. from Ashburn, Georgia, back in the lineup for Florida State. It certainly is. The first action for Tamari on Terry. And on the other side, the first action for the replacement of Paris Ford, Brandon Hill. So a couple of guys that we're going to be calling their names a lot tonight. See Wilson again on the orbit. Travis will deliver the ball to him. Ontario Wilson toward the 20. Cam Bright down there for Pittsburgh on the stop. Well, along with DeMar just, Hamlin. This is just an extension of the run game. I love the flash fake to the running back and then the toss out wide. It's basically just like a long handoff or a sweep play, Rocky. First down and 10. Florida State scrimmaging from Pittsburgh's 20. Travis, little jump pass. And Corbin, the catch. He's knocked down at the 13, Rocky. Yeah, you see Brandon Hill on the tackle there. One thing I want folks at home to watch is how aggressive the safeties for Pitt are. That's a hallmark of a Pat Narduzzi defense. They essentially, Rodney, get a nine-man front. So you'll see nine and also number three, DeMar Hamlin, really, really aggressive on that run today. Yeah, there was Hamlin on the stop there. Now second and three. Here's Travis again. Kind of sold the run and now does run with it. First and goal for Florida State. There's where he's dangerous, Roddy. Yeah, and they, they didn't get what they wanted. He was actually trying to take advantage of the aggressiveness that Rocky was just talking about, but they covered Kim and McDonald up the seam. So Jordan Travis just takes off and gets a great game. Ten-yard run, first and goal. And Corbin on first down. Fights to the one. Patrick Jones laying on the ground, 91 in the white jersey. Playing the defensive end spot there, too, for Pittsburgh. Wes, I'm pretty impressed with Florida State's offense on this first drive. This pit defense is one of the best in the league, and Florida State has just methodically moved down the field. A lot of it's been the legs of Jordan Travis. You see there, they bring a tight end. That's Wyatt Rector, by the way, who comes in to take the snap and then plunge into the end zone. The transfer from Western Michigan. Well, Seems that uh, <laughs> Kenny Dillingham was working on his playbook here in the bye week. Well, Kenny Dillingham told us that they went back to basics, and maybe this is one <laughs> of the basics, but it looks to me like something that they would have installed during the bye week to get a quick score, and that's exactly what they do, catching the pit defense off guard. What a first drive, though, for Florida State to establish themselves in this game. Ten plays, 75 yards, and just ahead of three minutes. And you see Grothaus out to try and add the point after Rector scored on the plunge. And the kick. 7-3 it is, Roddy. Well, Wes, this Florida State offense and Florida State team has to be fired up. You see Wyatt Rector there. Lift him up. In the, the ACC with Roddy Jones, Rocky Boyman, West Durham. We welcome you back. Florida State took it 75 yards in 10 plays to grab the lead after Pitt had a kick or field goal on their opening possession. And we'll see the Panthers start from the 25 here. Wyatt Rector, the uh, touchdown, Roddy. Yeah, a little a bit of a a little bit of trickery from Florida State. Wyatt Rector motions in, goes under center, drives in, caps off a 10-play, 75-yard drive. That honestly, Jordan Travis, I thought, had a, had a really nice start. Made a couple plays with his feet, made a big third down throw. So a really nice start for Florida State. The question is, they have been good on their first drives of the game and of the half, really all season. The question is, how do they do adjustment-wise? Let's see what happens with Kenny Pickett here on drive number two, by the way. Threw the ball to Jared Wayne for the big play in the opening possession. And this is Vincent Davis. And back to the line of scrimmage and no more. 
for Davis. He got hit by the freshman Stephen Dix at linebacker, wearing 32 today for the Knowles. Uh, Rocky, they really talked about Stephen Dix. They're excited to see him in this role today. How about that? An 18-year-old starting middle linebacker. This kid was playing high school football last year, and they just almost got, yeah, there he goes. One on the play there. But, yeah, very, very excited about his aggressiveness and even the attitude he brings as a youngster to this defense. Yeah. Third down after the carry by Davis. Mike Norvell and his staff cited several guys that they kind of want to see in spots, young guys especially. Pittsburgh on third and seven. Pickett cuts it loose, and a catch is made in traffic. And a nice job by Trey Tipton. Just his fourth catch of the year. And a nine-yarder to pick up the first. Beautifully timed by Kenny Pickett. Hits the top of his drop, knows where he wants to go with the football, and delivers a strike. Honestly, Wes, that's one of the things that's been missing with him out of the lineup, the decisiveness and the ability to make those type throws. See Addison in motion on first and ten. Knowles bringing pressure. Slips it to the freshman. And Jordan Addison to the 40-yard line. Looked like Ray Woody was there along with Stephen Dix again. And the, the best thing I saw on that play was Kenny Pickett moving in the pocket. He jumps to his left, moves up in the pocket, and delivers that strike. Jordan Addison has been uh, as good as advertised, but Kenny Pickett's ability to move is going to be a big part of this game. Second down and five. And this is Davis on the carry. Interested to see, guys, how much man-to-man -man Florida State will play on defense. Usually you don't want to play that against Pickett because he can, you know, take off and run. You want all your eyes back on the quarterback. So without his ability to run, maybe they can play some more press man on the outside. Well, That's a good point. Here's the third down play and a catch by Shockey Jock Louis. Took a big lick from Jerry and Jones. Once again, Kenny Pickett delivering on third down. They went to that bunch formation again. A couple guys on both sides. A couple receivers almost stacked. It looks like they're going to be just short. And it's going to send out the punt team. A junior from Australia, Kirk Christodulo. And Keyshawn Helton is deep for Florida State. Krista Dulo, fifth in the league at 43.7. Helton only has about five yard average on four returns, and he fair catches this right around the 10 yard line. So the Seminoles get it back, and Roddy, here come two bad hombres for the Panthers. Yes, sir. Rashad Weaver is coming off the edge against Syracuse. The tackle's got his eyes in the wrong place. You got no shot against 17 if you don't have him tracked from the very beginning. And on the other side of Rashad Weaver is Patrick Jones the second, a guy who has been fantastic this season, really throughout his career. One of the things that they're going to be susceptible to, you're going to see a great speed rush, ducks around the, the tackle's eye on Johnson, but if there's no pressure up the middle, a mobile quarterback like Bill Dracovic or Jordan Travis here today is going to be able to step up and make some plays. So these guys are fantastic. Weaver and Jones are going to be terrorizing the backfield all day long. But if you don't have push from up the middle, if you don't keep the integrity of those pass rush lanes, Jordan Travis may be able to have some success stepping up in the pocket. There was a penalty on the punt, so Florida State going to start inside its five at the four for Jordan Travis. And you see both guys on Pat Narduzzi's bench here for first and ten. And Jay Sean Corban runs right into Servassier Dennis. Better get used to the sophomore from Christian Brothers in uh, Syracuse, New York, because this guy has had a very, very nice year so far. He's becoming a star in this league. Uh, one of these linebackers that's versatile, can run and hit. He's fun to watch. Loss of almost two on the play. And Servassier Dennis will make the tackle here on the run of Jay Sean Corbin. 32 in the white. 
Comes in with ten and a half tackles behind the line, which leads Pittsburgh. It was a nine-yard gain, leaves third and three. Yeah, and I would expect Florida State to keep it on the ground here. Another one of those zone reads. And Travis will keep it. Cuts back, and Jordan Travis reaches midfield and is way ahead of the race. Touchdown. Jordan Travis. Wes, we used to call that 88, and now it's a gate. Jordan Travis on the zone read makes a great decision keeping the football, and the way Pitt plays, once you pass that second line, there's typically nobody there with the motion. He's able to outrun everybody at the end zone. What an early statement by the Doles. Two possessions and two touchdowns, Roddy. And Jordan Travis has been a huge part of that. You send the orbit motion, you clear out the cornerback, he makes the safety, Brandon Hill miss, and it is to the house. Nobody had a chance at catching 13. Well, Rocky, we said he was a game breaker. You're right, Wes. And one thing I know as a former linebacker, Travis does a really good job on his zone read, Roddy, of riding that fake down in there hard. You don't know when he's going to pull it, when he's going to give it. It really freezes those linebackers for just a split second. Yeah, Rocky, that's a great point. Just a, a half second of freezing by those linebackers allows the lineman to either get up to him or the lane to be open long enough to get up the seam. And again, Brandon Hill, the replacement of Paris Ford, is the safety on that side who's filling the alley. He's one-on-one -on -one with Jordan Travis, doesn't make the play, and Travis is to the house. So Mike Norvell has got to feel really good about his club start. Oh, yeah. In two ways. One, they held Pittsburgh to just that three to start, and now they've answered with back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. And Pittsburgh will start again from his 25 with Pickett. Yeah, we're going to go to the to the wide look of this. Watch what the motion does. The motion clears out the corner, and Brandon Hill is the, is the safety that's on the hash, the furthest back. Watch how he fills the hole, and Jordan Travis just makes a miss. All the other DBs are in man-to-man -man coverage on the opposite side, and it becomes a foot race. And Jordan Travis, let me tell you, Wes, he's not going to lose many of those. No, and, and Rocky, it goes back to what we were talking about at the top. Paris Ford's not here. He's a veteran guy. He's their leading tackler. And now all of a sudden, they're excited to see Brandon Hill. But right there, that's baptism by fire for Hill. There's no question about it. Now, what I... Pitt's got to start focusing on Jordan Travis. That's just going to open up some opportunities for Tamori and Terry on the outside. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point there, Rocky. Loss of one on the play. Now they try and feed Addison on the perimeter. And Jordan Addison able to get back about four on the play. Still third and long, though, for Pittsburgh. And that's that's an area they need to stay out of. Yeah, they're trying to be patient with the run game, and that's putting them in second and long situations. Third and long, you never want to be there. And, and the response of this Pittsburgh team is going to be interesting to watch. You have a leader like Paris Ford uh, opt out. You have Jason Pennock, the, the big-time cornerback, not make the trip due to a team issue. So where are they emotionally? Yeah, third down and seven. Pick it on the straight drop and under duress. Ball is loose. It's scooped up by Stephen Dix, the linebacker, who's going to take it for a score if it stands. Florida State is celebrating a third touchdown here in this opening period. Joshua Kando got involved in the collision around Kenny Pickett. And it is a score for Florida State and the rookie Stephen Dix. Now we are going to get another look at this. But if this stands, what a thunderstorm of points for the Seminoles. 
I don't know. Is that an incomplete pass play. or a fumble? The fumble recovered for a touchdown. They're going to review, the review it, obviously. I can't see. I could not see there if the ball was out of his hand when his arm started coming forward. Off, of initial, off the initial look, I thought it was a forward pass. This will probably be the best view we get. Wow. I think I think it's a throw to be honest with you. I don't yeah. see the ball out of his hand. It's the I don't see the empty hand moving forward. I see his fingertips on the ball as they move forward. It'll be interesting to see what the referees determine. I you know what Rocky? I see the hand go forward. I know I'm talking to a linebacker here. And a <laughs> linebacker just scored. But I saw the I saw the elbow and the hand kind of move forward and the ball go forward. I, I tend to agree with you, Wes. The only thing is, if video replay is used to, if there's indisputable video evidence, you overturn the call. You're not supposed to officiate the game from the booth. So that's going to be the issue is it was ruled a fumble on the field. Yeah, you're right. And that, that exactly look we right. just saw, I, I think, is the best look it's going to give you. I, I, would, I would determine that that's indisputable video evidence, that the ball was still in his hand as it's coming forward. Now his arm gets hit, which causes the awkward throw, but that looked like it was still in his hand when it when it was coming forward. Boy, Florida State is playing with a lot of momentum here early, fellas. Those two scores have really energized Mike Norvell's team. And, and Wes, let me just say this: even before that touchdown there, that may or may not stand, the pit sideline was absolutely lifeless. I was standing right next to him the whole time, and just a lot of blank stares over there. They are shell shocked. And before yep. the game, we got a thunderstorm. After further review, the quarterback's hand was going forward. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. The ball will be brought back to the previous spot. Boot oh, worked oh, down. Please the set the game clock to 407. The partisans not happy at all, as you would imagine. Kenny Pickett relieved because Kirk Christodoulou will come on to punt. And Roddy, you were saying about the rain shower. Florida well, State was raining down on Pittsburgh, if that's good. Exactly. That, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, Florida State, the energy from this team and just the way they've come out in this game has been as quick and furious as the thunderstorm that we saw for about five minutes before the game. <laughs> so here is Chris Dulo to punt to Keyshawn Helton, who had an eight-yard return a couple of weeks ago at Louisville. And Helton runs to the opposite side of the field. And inside the 15th is where Florida State will start. ACC Network coverage tomorrow of a field hockey championship that is the top two seeds. Louisville won the regular season meeting with North Carolina. And tomorrow they'll meet at high noon on Karen Shelton Stadium in Chapel Hill, you'll get to see one of the great players in collegiate field hockey in the Tar Heels, Aaron Matson. Justine Sowery's done a marvelous job coaching Louisville. Karen Shelton, a marvelous job now over 700 wins. The winningest coach in NCAA field hockey is North Carolina's Karen Shelton after her team won on the golden goal last night to advance to the championship game. I think you've been all over the field hockey. You've been waving the flag. You're telling me I needed to get into hey, it a little bit. Telling you now. Great stuff from Chapel Hill and our coverage on ACC Network's been sensational. You'll enjoy the championship tomorrow at high noon. LaDamian Webb has come in the ball game as the running back now. We've seen Jay Sean Corbin, and now we get a look at the sophomore from Opelika, Alabama, LaDamian Webb after a three yard gain. And Travis moving around in the pocket and unloads it incomplete to Kentron Portier. Freshman from the Miami area. Pressure by Patrick Jones there, guys. Wes, after not playing in the last series, Rashad Weaver and Patrick Jones back in the game already making an impact. You saw the pressure, but it was really made on the back end by the coverage as well. Yep. So now looking at third down and long and you see they move McDonald and here is Travis Panthers coming with pressure and it's intercepted 
Picked off by A.J. Woods. On a ball intended for Portier, it looked like, over in front of the Pittsburgh bench. A.J. Woods, the sophomore, comes away with his first interception. Well, we've seen Eric Hallett at the cornerback position filling in. This time you get A.J. Woods. You see the turnover dunk, which is what Pittsburgh does. But Pitt opts to heat up the pocket. They send six on this one. Jordan Travis knows it, so he goes to his one-on-one. -on -one. But the receiver, Portier, goes outside. Travis throws it inside, and it's an easy pick for Pitt. We'll see if this is the thing that gets them going emotionally in this game and guys you Ball also up. see you also saw Patrick Jones the defensive end rushing stand up two point running up the middle in the egg up there 312 to go first period here's Pickett looking to throw and it's caught at the five Jordan Addison's first grab is a big one to the big play on defense why not go to the best receiver that you've had all season he may be a true freshman but he does not play like it can he pick it delivering a strike 26 yard throw first and goal at the six quick throw and incomplete looking for Jacques Louis take a look at the last play Kenny Pickett moving a little bit to his right a little bit to his left and delivers the strike Jordan Addison making the catch ahead of Raymond Woody filling in at that safety spot. Inside give, and this is A.J. Davis grinding to about the one. And now all of a sudden, Pittsburgh, who is seventh in the ACC, 16 touchdowns, 27 red zone possessions during the year, finds themselves at third and goal. And Wes, Kenny Pickett coming out of the game, Joey yelling in. Quarterback sneak is such a big part of Pittsburgh's arsenal when they get down here. Actually, it's like Nick Patty in the game at quarterback. Yep. That's exactly who it is. 6-3, redshirt sophomore Patty will keep the football and score. What a big turnover. And then three, four plays later, into the end zone goes Nick Patty for the touchdown. It's exactly what Pitt needed. The turnover, the big play by Kenny Pickett to get him close and Jordan Addison. And then you bring in the sub, you bring in the reliever, Nick Patty, to finish it off. Quarterback run, quarterback sneak, such a big part of this Pittsburgh offense. Kenny Pickett a little banged up. So you can bring in the backup, draw up the middle, touchdown. Well, Pittsburgh gets their ninth interception of the year and they cash it in for a touchdown. And the deficit after the Kessman point is just four points. <laughs> Let's check out this pit offensive line up front led by Jimmy Morrissey. Big number 67 in the middle. Gets enough on the big defensive tackle. Corey Durden opens it up. And hey, how about a little quarterback love? Kenny Pickett saying, hey, that's my touchdown, but I can't run, so you take it. <laughs> What's Pickett doing in the end zone, by the way? That's a good, that, that's, that's probably the best question of all that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and guys, you got to figure that the absence of Marvin Lewis would have really helped right there. A big 330-pound defensive tackle. He's not playing on this. So, yeah, the quarterback run game up the middle, kind of a detriment here without. Well, and Rocky, the way they have struggled in the red zone, and Roddy, we've seen Pittsburgh in a handful of series this year, first in goals, right? And, and they finally found something maybe with Nick Patty there. Yeah, the, the 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 fact that that is such a big part of who you are, just bringing in the guy who's mobile and healthy certainly helps you. And out of the end zone, Ja'Kai Douglas. And it'll be just beyond the 10 where it's returned. Uh, but make your pardon, Jay Sean Corbin. Let's go back to his Jordan Travis, and here's the interception by A.J. Woods. Well, the interception happened stop the screen, but what Rocky was talking about, Patrick Jones is the stand-up at the middle linebacker position. They're going to bring six guys, so Jordan Travis has to get it out quick. Receiver turns out, ball's thrown in, and it's about the easiest interception that A.J. Woods is going to have. All right, so the penalty on Pittsburgh and the Panthers 
have an offside on the kick. And it's on Shockey Jock Louis, and so therefore they'll back up five and ask Alex Kessman to kick it again. And I don't blame them when you were going to start from the 13. So a reset here at 204 to go in the first period. Interesting ball game. We we weren't quite sure what we were going to get, right? With the bye weeks for each school. Pittsburgh we came were in, not. got a 50 51 yard field goal from Kessman, and then Florida State a pair of touchdowns, and then the Woods interception a moment ago cashed in. Been a, been a fun start. And there will be no return here by Ja'Kai Douglas. And Florida State will start first and 10 off its 25. So Travis will come back out here again just ahead of two minutes to play in this first period. And Florida State has seen their opponents score 63% of their points in the first half. And already 10 points on the board after the Nick Patty touchdown. Uh, Roddy, I enjoyed our visit with Mike Norvell this week. I, I think he more than anybody else understands the long process he's involved here and, and essentially taken on in Tallahassee. Yeah, I, I thought the quote of our visit was when he said, we need to go through all the adversity that we're going through because he's looking at building a program. Sometimes you need adversity to grow. Yep, and here is Travis. Another long throw on first down and incomplete looking for Douglas. That's the fast freshman from Louisiana. And Wes, this is this is an area that Florida State has struggled mightily in the past few weeks. The drops. I mean, Douglas gets one-on-one -on -one coverage against Damar Hamlin, beats the safety, and Jordan Travis looks like he puts a pretty good throw out there. The guy Douglas just drops it. Yep. So now second down and ten for Travis and the Seminoles. You see the two by two look and a quick throw on the perimeter and catch hauled in and that is handled by the Damian Webb or no to a I beg your pardon Lawrence to a freshman from St. Petersburg wearing number nine an interesting Pittsburgh went back to that look that three down look with Patrick Jones there in the middle using him moving him around. We'll see if they go to that more often on second downs, but here they've got a third and two. And once again, I'd expect zone read. Mm -hmm. And handoff straight ahead. That is Webb. And we'll see if LaDamian Webb. Oh, it's just short. And whistle stops. And a timeout taken by Pittsburgh. Florida State got right up on the line. And it looked like they were going to snap it for fourth and one, Roddy. Well, whether or not they were going to snap it, their speed getting back up to the line forced that timeout from Pitt. So, uh, again, if they were going to snap it, whether or not they were going to, just hurrying to the line pulls a, a timeout that may be very important down the, down the way. And that's something that Mike Norvell has done over the course of this group. And he was at Memphis, would always alternate or would, would play with tempo. It's a nice job by his offensive executing, getting up to the line and pulling that timeout. Well, Mike Norvell, who was hired on December 11th as the 11th head football coach in Florida State history. After a great run at Memphis where he won almost 40 ball games with the Tigers. And of course, you know, the blowout against Miami. James Blackman lost his starting spot. Jordan Travis came in the next week and brought him from behind to beat Jacksonville State. And then the upset of Carolina, bookended by losses to Notre Dame and to Louisville here in the premier campaign for Coach Norvell. Florida State's been a fourth down team. They have no problems trying to pick it up. In fact, they've attempted 16 of them on the year already. Fourth and one, and Webb crashes toward the 39-yard line. So once again, fourth down, just a businessman snap for the Knowles. It's a really nice job by that Florida State offensive line of creating surge and converting that fourth down. Ball got fumbled. Webb scooped it up on the bounce. 
and will lose a yard. So almost chaos, Rocky, right there for the Knowles. It was, but talking about this Florida State offensive line, this has been the detriment of this team for probably going on four seasons. It has been a lot better this year. They're running the ball better, and right there, going forward on fourth down and getting it, a big confidence booster for that group. Yep. So second and 11. Travis back up in the pocket, escapes the pressure, and will flip it toward this tight end, Preston Daniel, who makes a sliding catch of it. Well, how about the legs <laughs> of Jordan Travis, though? I mean, moving up, Patrick Jones is there. You got a running back holding on for dear life, and Travis makes a play. Great catch on the opposite end, but again, the legs of Jordan Travis, even when the offensive line gives up some pressure, he's able to escape and make a positive play out of it. And that'll be the final play of the first period here. We've gone through 15 minutes in Tallahassee. We've seen a defensive play by Pittsburgh with a Woods interception. We've seen Jordan Travis with an 88-yard touchdown run. And Florida State's got a four-point lead after 15 at the Dope. We go to quarter number two here at Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee with Roddy Jones, Rocky Boyman, West Durham. Florida State a four-point lead in the football, and right away here goes LaDamian Webb, and he will crash inside the 45 to the Pittsburgh 44. Good hard running by Webb, Rocky. Yeah, it is, and that's what's tough. You got the running back you got to worry about, then you also got to worry about Jordan Travis and, you know, the ability of those linebackers right, right now are thinking they don't want to make a highlight reel on Jordan Travis. <laughs> First down and 10. And again, Webb on the, the fake the jet sweep and then hit the dive play. Hey, what Kenny Dillingham giving you a lot to think about if you're Pittsburgh when you start to rush, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you've well, got to stay on track. This. You've got you got the jet sweep coming across. Then you have the zone read. I mean, how do you diagnose that as a linebacker, Rocky? And the other thing is the formations. The amount of formations like this condensed and they're out wide. Just so much to think about as a linebacker out there. And Travis now having to escape the heat and will not. <laughs> Pittsburgh fired through here, and Servassier Dennis, no surprise, was involved. Well, this is. One of those things that when Jordan Travis sees it, he's going to want it. But watch the bottom right. You're going to see the blitz coming up the middle. Servassier Dennis eventually gets there and brings him down. But once you make the first man miss and you see that second guy coming, Hoppa Baldonado was back there. Once you see that second guy coming, that's when you got to throw it away and live to fight another down. By the way, another tackle behind the line for the Panther leader in that category. And Dennis. That's McDonald, the tight end, kind of resetting on third and very long. And Travis looking ahead, and the catch is made, and that's Jordan Young. 21st catch of the year for Young. Well, that was a fantastic route by Jordan Young and a great delivery by Jordan Travis. Flags are thrown, and we're going to get procedure here, I believe. Maybe too many men on the field here, guys. That, that quick snap caught a pit defender on the field, I believe. All right. Before the snap, ball start. Offense, number 87. <laughs> oh, Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, let's take a look. Watch down at the bottom of your screen the route that's run by Young. It's sort of an, a one that he has an option to run a corner or sit it down. He sees the cornerback on the outside, sits down the route. Jordan Travis sees it, delivers the football. Really nice job of reading the defense and of Jordan Travis being on the same page and converting. So the 11th play of the drive for Florida State in Pittsburgh territory at the 40. Fourth down, Travis in the pocket and knocked around and sacked. You're never sure until you see Jordan Travis finally on the ground. Cam Bright was there for the Panthers, along with Phil Campbell. 
This one was a team effort, Wes. They absolutely collapsed the pocket. You had pressure. Just reinforcements coming all the time. So Kenny Pickett and Pittsburgh take over at its 47. Following the turnover on downs, and Pickett dumps it here. And that is Moraga, the tight end. And he got hit pretty good by Amari, Gar or Amari Gaynor, the Seminoles' leading tackler. This is a depleted pit tight end room, so Moraga is going to be on the field a lot. But it was a nice play by Amari Gaynor, making him pay the price for coming across the middle. Yep. Second down in five. Another quick throw, and this is Addison, shy of the first down. Jarvis Brownlee, number three, is a redshirt freshman from Carroll City who tackled the Panthers, number three. Jordan Addison. Yeah. Hit went five wide on that one, and with Kenny Pickett's ankle injury, Florida State doesn't have to worry about the threat of the quarterback draw in those situations. They went man-to-man, -man, but... Right now, third and short for Pitt. Pitts hit half their third downs. Pick it for Addison. And he will reach the 41. And that will be enough for the first down. Jared Wayne out there blocking for Addison did just enough to get Jerry and Jones <laughs> to run by the play. It wasn't what you would call a, uh, a, a pancake block, but just a nudge to get him out of the way and be able to get the first down. <laughs> okay. It was close to a block in the back, honestly, but on the shoulder. It was on the I was, shoulder. So, uh, I was, so was wondering if you were going to bring that up, by the way. Uh, that well, it was close you know, to the I always give the, the offensive guy the benefit of the doubt in those situations. No, I understand. First down and 10, plus territory possession now for Pittsburgh. Pickett. And there's another catch by Addison. Jordan Addison averaging almost six catches a game, which is second in the ACC. Just under 70 yards a ball game. And yeah, he has the vertical stuff, Roddy, but a lot of it's this, right? Yeah, and this is just a deep in route that Kenny Pickett's able to complete to Jordan Addison. His feel is so good. His ability to run routes, but his feel for the game and be on the same page is what stands out. Here's Pickett being flushed, and he will throw it away at the feet of his running back, A.J. Davis. Kando scoops it up and will go to the end zone just in case, but it looked like an incomplete pass thrown away at the feet of his running back. Well, it's, it's definitely not a fumble, but the question is, is it grounding? Because Kenny Pickett does a nice job of getting himself out of the pocket, but it still has to cross the line of scrimmage unless there's a receiver in the area. It looks like they've determined that the running back was in the area, but let's just say the definition of in the area uh, would be used pretty liberally on this one. Yeah, Jer Janarius Robinson's the one that forced Pickett to give up the play. And here's Turner on the sweep. DJ Turner banged out of bounds inside the 20. You see Brendan Kent and others involved in this. Ooh, collision on the outside. This game's gotten a little chippy. It seems like the punch is thrown early by both teams. Number four, 15 yard penalty. Second out. Oh, what a big penalty against Pittsburgh here. Yeah. But, but the plays that have been made by both teams have made it feel a little chippy. Rocky, I wonder if you're feeling that as well, because you said Pitt's, Pitt's sideline was a little feeling a little dead. But yeah. it seems like they picked it up a little bit. No, after that interception, then the score, and then holding on fourth down has really rejuvenated that sideline. And let me just tell you, on that hit right there out of bounds, I could feel that, and that was a couple of feet from me. I'm glad <laughs> I'm not out there anymore. <laughs> Boys you, are saw the, you saw the penalty on Carter. So that backs Pittsburgh up for second and a lot. And here's Addison again in space. And Jordan Addison breaking free. Inside the 25 goes the freshman before he's brought down. 16-yard play. Florida State opted to drop back and play coverage. And so it's just content to drop it off to your stellar freshman. He got a couple of blocks out front and made it third and manageable. 
They've done a nice job of moving Jordan Addison around. He's tight to the formation at the bottom of the screen here. Pickett gets it to Davis and Brownlee again. So now fourth down. Loss of three and Kessman comes on. Quick dump and a nice play by Brownlee out of the Florida State secondary. With it being fourth and ten and the way Kessman's kicked, it's a no doubter. Kick the field goal. Nice job of Florida State's defense holding. 45 yard try for Kessman. To draw Pittsburgh to within a point. And the kick by Kessman is no good. 8.46 to go first half in Tallahassee. Alex Kessman misses from 45 after hitting earlier from 51. Irish and Oregon in the second cut, if you will. And we get a flag here as we rejoin you live. And a penalty forthcoming. Here's Riley Johnson. Ball start. Offense. Number 87. Five-yard penalty. First down. Cameron McDonald guilty of the ball start. So that, of course, means Clemson and Notre Dame, in case you haven't heard, has some, some juice to it tonight, gentlemen. <laughs> Tell you what, the Irish, if there was ever a chance, now is it with Trevor Lawrence out of the game. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, here comes the alumni card. I was wondering <laughs> just how strong it would be, and it was, it was good. I like that. Travis. Long throw and over the head of Tamari and Terry and Roddy. They must have heard you during the commercial break. Yeah, I said that they had not yet seen a deep shot to Tamari and Terry. And first down is the time to go to it because Pitt's going to load up against the run. You get them lined up against Eric Hallett. This swing deep into back, if you will, play some safety, play some corner, but throw just a little off the mark. Travis is. Six of 11 for 65 yards and the interception to Woods. He does have the longest scoring run by quarterback in Florida State history today already. Travis under pressure again. The ball is loose and it is finally recovered by Corbin. Question is, was he down before he coughed it up? Could not tell on the initial the initial look that we got, but John Morgan creates the pressure. Watch him against it's number 51, Baby on Johnson. Looks like he tried to throw it. I think he was down before both of those things. They, they, they call it an incomplete pass on the field, by the way. Yeah, I think that's a sack, Wes. Uh, right? They're going to have to review this. I would think. See, there's the whistle to stop play. The previous play of an incomplete forward pass is under further review. This has all the trappings. <laughs> On the field gives John Morgan Pittsburgh's third sack of the day. The Panthers came into this, fellas, third in the country in sacks per game at 4.4, and they got one here. Yeah, and you see clearly there that left knee hits the ground. Heck, the right knee hits the ground as well before he throws the ball away. Really nice job of Pitt. Heating up the pocket, getting pressure, and getting Jordan Travis on the ground, which is no small task as we've seen today. Third down, 23 to the first for Jordan Travis. Deslin Alexander, who they moved inside. One of their little defensive tactics during the bye week, also in there with Morgan on the, the play. Here's Travis again trying to escape, and that time cannot break away from Cam Bright. Well, it, it maybe took a couple of possessions, Roddy, but it looks like the Panthers might have a bead on Jordan Travis here a little bit. Yeah, the adjustments that have been made have gone the Panthers' way, and typically when you get into these third down situations, Pitt's going to line up six guys around the line of scrimmage, and they're only going to send three or four. So the question is which combination of those guys are going to make the three or four that come. The last couple of plays we've seen Cam Bright get in the backfield, and before that it was John Morgan. Three and out go the Seminoles. First punt of the day for Mastromato. And DJ Turner caught it in traffic. And we'll get back 10 yards to the Florida State 40 yard line. It takes some kind of guts to pull this off now. 
as a guy who has been back there in the past, yes, it absolutely does to catch it like that in traffic. You've got to have faith that those guys are going to run by you, that your blockers are on them. But DJ Turner does it and is able to give his team good field position. Wow. Ball at the Florida State. 41-yard line now for Pickett and the Panthers. Kenny Pickett, who missed the last two ball games with an ankle injury, sustained late in the fourth quarter of play at Boston College back on the 10th of October. And Vincent Davis in the backfield with Pickett. Play fake by Pickett. They're going to hand it to Addison with some help out in front. And he will get inside the 30, it looks like, toward the 29 of Florida State. 12 yards on the on the sweep here. Yeah, and, and Wes, there's been a lot of injuries on this Florida State defense. They're coming into this game without Marvin Wilson. And then in the secondary alone, you're without Renardo Green, Travis Jay, and Akeem Dent, who have been players this year. And Hamson Nasruddin, we still have not seen this season as he recovers from an injury that he suffered early, late excuse me, last year. First and 10, and Vincent Davis breaks free. Inside the 10 toward the pylon. And Davis is ruled out at the two. Twenty-eight yard run for Vincent Davis. Just an inside zone play for Pitt. The entire line gets collapsed. And let's look. Can't tell on that one. We're gonna get a look here. Watch the left foot of Vincent Davis. Yeah, it's out on the line. It's a nice job by Jerry and Jones of preventing the touchdown, but Pitt's cooking with grease now. Kenny Pickett stays in the game for first and goal. Davis and Janarius Robinson hug him up at the line of scrimmage and no more. Rocky mentioned earlier, Marvin Wilson out, but the interior of the Florida State team doing a nice job. Nick Patty now coming into the game for, for Pitt. Again, giving you the mobility at quarterback that Kenny Pickett is lacking today with that ankle injury. They empty the backfield. Here's Patty. He'll keep it again and a touchdown. Touchdown, Pitt. So the Panthers in the red zone go Nick Patty one more time and take the lead. When they empty the backfield, it thins out the box. It's just a little quarterback power play. And Nick Patty's able to get in the end zone. We're going to start calling him touchdown vulture by the end of the game because he comes in <laughs> for a couple of plays. Two plays for Nick Patty, two touchdowns. And Kessman to make it a three-point lead. Four plays, 41 yards, and a minute 41. Good. And Pat Narduzzi's team's in front, Roddy. Well, it was set up by the great punt return, but Nick Patty comes in the game. The offensive line, once again, moving people. Nick Patty in the end zone for Pitt. Did Rocky give you guys your prediction for the big one tonight, a Notre Dame alum? <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a second, Cornette. Look, you and, you and Boyman double up here. You both went to St. X. You both went to Notre Dame. I mean... It's like Jones and I are going to be auxiliary Good alums number. by the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, Rocky, great to have you with us. Uh, Tamari and Terry coming back on the field here for Florida State. Yeah, and I've really been watching the last couple of series, guys. Tamari and Terry, he just doesn't quite look himself. And that's, of course, look, he had the knee surgery. He was out a couple weeks. But I saw him kind of point to his leg one time. And just his body language, guys, doesn't look like a guy who's totally healthy and really feeling it. And that's, I mean, he's a major, major part of this offense. If they can get him going, to help the run game. So something to watch out for the rest of this game, the health of Tamari and Terry. And LaDamian Webb with Jordan Travis in the backfield. Travis goes to McDonald on the backside of the play. And he will pick up five to the 30. Cameron McDonald, six catches a year ago. But he has uh, really emerged as the next tight end for Florida State, if you will. Junior from Long Beach, California. Yeah, and really had to step up at that position, a position that Mike Norvell's offense has loved. Trey McKinney left in the offseason, and Cameron McDonald's had to step up. Quick throw. And 
On cue, Terry to the 40, first down. So 10 yards throw to scary Terry, Roddy. This is what, what makes him so good, even when he's a little hobbled, his ability to break tackles and make guys miss. That is special. He's making an impact. Another throw and a, out in the flat. That ball got knocked away from Wilson, but ruled incomplete. Ontario may not have had it. Well, I, I like the play call here. Obviously, the execution leaves some to be desired with the catch on the back end, but I like the ex I like the play calling. Coming off the zone read, you slip Cam McDonald out first in the drive. You do the same thing and go with the tunnel screen to Ontario Wilson, making Pitt respect the play action. Second down, 10, another throw to the backside. Jordan Young, another catcher in this first half. It'll be third down coming up, under five to go. Pittsburgh's taking the lead on a pair of red zone track keeps for Nick Patty. And by and the way, the Panthers ran the ball in that last possession as well. Yeah, they did, but but Pitt's been able to get a lot of pressure on Jordan Travis as we've crept deeper into this first half. But Florida State on this drive getting everything out of his hands quick so that Weaver, Jones, Morgan don't have the time on Pitt's defense to get to him. Knowles are three for seven on third down. Travis under duress. Breaks away. And will be pulled down. He got tripped up. Was that Bright that got the last hand in to keep Jordan Travis from busting another one? Was Cam Bright a fantastic open field tackle? I'd expect Florida State to go for it here. Mike Norvell aggressive, but watch the pressure. I mean, you got Patrick Jones coming up the middle. You've got Rashad Weaver coming off one side. Nobody's able to get him. A shoelace tackle. Fourth down and two. And Webb will not get there. He got stacked up and dropped. And Florida State gives it back on downs again. Second time in three possessions. They've cast it out. It was Toa Feely, by the way, who was the running back on the play. How about Rashad Weaver? He holds his line and is able to crash down. But Jordan Travis is reading Rashad Weaver there. Keeps his shoulders square to make Jordan Travis give the ball. And then on the front side, they stack it up. Weaver comes around from the back side, tackles the football. This pit defense stands up again and guys I think they've got to start rolling Jordan Travis outside the pocket the last three drives he's had no time back there he's felt very uncomfortable they got to get him outside give him a better picture to be able to get the ball downfield so here is Pickett and this is Davis picks up nine on the play Wes, you mentioned it just a second ago, but how about Pitt's ability to run the football in the last yeah. couple of drives? And when we, it was funny when we asked Pat Narduzzi, who on the offense do you need to see have a big game? He said, look, I'll just give you one name, Davis. One of the Davis <laughs> brothers, AJ or Vincent in the backfield. I'd love to see them get going in the run game. Second and one, just ahead of three minutes and pick it to throw. Back foot offer, middle of the field and caught. Right around the 10 yard line by Jordan Addison. I don't think Pickett ever came set when he cut it loose. He certainly did not. Falling off his back foot, but, but watch the route by Addison. It's a little double move where he goes up the middle inside of Asante Samuel. A nice catch off the turf. Yep. Here's Pickett. He will run, and Kenny Pickett scores. Three rushing scores by Pittsburgh quarterbacks here in the first half. We've had the pleasure of talking to Kenny Pickett a number of times through the years, and you know his competitive nature. So he's seeing Nick Patty out there getting the end zone, running the football. Florida State leaves a wide open lane for the quarterback, playing man to man. Kenny Pickett says, all right, I may not be able to run like I typically do, but I can run enough to get this one in the end zone. And in 64 seconds, Florida State has seen Pittsburgh.
Pittsburgh has struggled at all season, really the better part of the last two seasons. That's a great point on the offensive line. Running a guy by, creating the lane. Pitt putting up 24 points in the first half. You also win yeah. after the last couple of performances without Kenny Pickett. A little bit of a surprise. Yep. Well, don't forget State Farm halftime report here at the break. First half recap of not only what we've seen here, but also a preview of Clemson Notre Dame tonight. And I'm sure Jordan and the fellows will have a Look at North Carolina's big win at Duke. Boston College held off Syracuse. And Liberty and Virginia Tech was so wild at the end, you'll just have to watch it. Oh, man. Justin you'll Fuente just have to watch it. kicking himself about the way that game happened. Mm. Went down at the, end of the, at the end of the second half. Yep. 2.35 and all three timeouts left for Mike Norvell. Travis got away from Weaver. And whoa. Then he got blasted from behind by Deslin Alexandra. It's a nice job. They roll him out to try and get away from the pressure, but Weaver is able to get out there and Alexander just pursuing from the inside. This defensive line is absolutely relentless. Yep. Second and a dozen. And it looked like it was going to cost Travis more. Quick throw. And a catch right around the 33-yard line. And there's McDonald again. And Wes, Cam McDonald couldn't control this, but he goes out of bounds there, which obviously stops the clock. So if Pitt gets a stop here, they're going to get the ball back with a lot of time left in one timeout. Yep, third and short. And under two to go. Another quick throw and overthrown. Looking for McDonald. Looked like he had levels there, Roddy. McDonald and then further down the field to Marion Terry. Yeah, and, and my assumption was that Florida State was going to run the ball and make Pitt use one of their two timeouts so that they only so the Panthers only had one timeout, but the incomplete pass again stops the clock. And now Pitt's got 154, two timeouts. They've got plenty of time to put on some points, put up some points. And they get the ball, or excuse me, Florida State gets the ball in the second half. So this could be a big score. Uh, to extend it to three score game. Well, and there's the punt. And Turner will go to the fair catch at the 18 yard line. That's where Pittsburgh will start. Let's get to our big bow moment brought to you by Bojangles. Yeah, and, and this moment is kind of where things turned, Wes. It was the interception by Jordan Travis. Florida State's up 14 to 3 at that point. Throws this interception, and Pitt's able to go down and capitalize on it to draw it to 14 to 10. And ever since, they've been harassing Jordan Travis, mixing up the looks, sending guys from all over the place. And this Pitt defensive line has really made its presence felt after a couple of iffy drives early. They were kind of on their back foot. They have certainly been the aggressor since those first two drives. Rocky, here's the other thing I'd offer to you. Paris Ford opted out midseason or early in the week with four games to go. Jason Pennock not here. They're a little depleted in the secondary, but you wouldn't know it the way they're banging away with the front seven here in this first half. There's no question they've woken up. And guys, one thing really apparent down here at field level is the speed of that defense. They really, really pursue very, very well. It's credible defense. To Florida State. First charge to this half. So you see Florida State bang the time out here in a 10-point game. Interesting momentum shift for two teams coming off bye weeks. And you, you had the feeling with the, the pandemic and all kind of the limitations on things you can do in order to stay safe and stay healthy playing football that, that both guys wanted to use that bye week to do some things fundamentally. In fact, Mike Norvell talked about it exclusively. I think Pittsburgh talked about just, you know, things they needed to do, like score touchdowns, run the ball better, things that were more subjective, if you will. Well, Pittsburgh's done some of that, but 
In our meeting yesterday with Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator of the Knowles, he talked about killing momentum for Pittsburgh offensively. That has not happened in this first half, guys. No, you're absolutely correct, Wes. Second and eight, picket loads and offline for Shockey Jock Louis. So, Kenny Pickett, and there is Pat Narduzzi. <laughs> Always a great visit. Sixth year at Pittsburgh, trying to pick up his 40th win as the Panthers coach today. Yeah, and he's got an interesting decision to make here, kind of like Florida State on the other side. Do you run the ball and try and draw one of those timeouts, or do you put it in the air, play aggressive, try and get the first down, and run the risk of leaving Florida State with two? Pickett out in the flat. Addison upfield for a few yards, like a running play, Roddy. Yeah, safe pass. I like the call. You get the completion, and it looks like Janarius Robinson was a little banged up on that one, but yeah. swing it out to Addison. Sante Samuel rallies in the secondary. It's a guy whose name we have not called a lot today because Egg. Pitt yep. has not thrown at him, which is a good thing for a cornerback that we haven't called his name. Yeah. Well, and you're right about Janarius Robinson shaking up on the play. Yeah, Sante Samuel Jr. has had a phenomenal junior campaign, leads the nation with three picks. He's second in the country with uh, two fumble recoveries, by the way. And uh, he's sixth nationally with eight passes defended. I mean, the uh, proverbial stat sheet stuffer is Asante Samuel Jr. Yeah, you see that stat accounted for more than half of the team's takeaways. And uh, we have not been calling his name because the ball has been going elsewhere. They've been moving Jordan Addison around. You've not seen the ball, ball thrown in Asante Samuel Jr.'s direction at all in this one. Yep. So... Pittsburgh will punt it with Kirk Christodoulo. And do we get movement? It's all the start. Panthers. Offense number six. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. That is <laughs> Trey Tipton. Or John Morgan, rather, the other number six. On his away for Helton, who will make the fair catch right around the 30 yard line, Roddy. Well, Wes, be sure to tune in every weekday morning here on ACC Network for Packer and Dura. Make sure you're watching, Wes. And they'll have the latest news and information from the ACC, along with special guests from the world of sports. That's Monday through, through Friday, beginning at 7 a.m. Eastern. Packer and Durham is also available on the ESPN app. Now, I know you're busy during that time of day, but you got to watch. Pull up a chair. You get Eric Macklin on Mondays. You get Tom Luganville on Tuesdays. Throughout the week, filled with some fantastic guests. Those two guys do a pretty good job there. By the way, Chris Cotter lobbied for a show appearance earlier today, I understand it. Well, honestly, why has he? I mean, I, I will I lobby with him. You got to have him on. Well, you've been on the show. Rocky Boyman also now in the wings, apparently, for a show appearance. <laughs> hey, hey. We're like, we love all in serve all. Here's Travis, and he'll be sacked. And another sack by the Panthers here in this first half, and that's Patrick Jones. Well, part of the halftime adjustments are going to have to be how to help out this offensive line and help out Jordan Travis because Patrick Jones just wraps back in on the inside and teams up. If it looked like, looked like Servasia Dennis there as well, who, whose name we've called a ton. But, yep. Wes, when we talked to Kenny Dillingham, the offensive coordinator for Florida State, he said, that, look, we've been fantastic early on in halves with the plays that we've practiced, but when we've had to make adjustments, that's where we've struggled, and that's borne fruit today. 
Five sacks in the first half for the Panthers. And Terry with Woods and a flag. And Rocky, you're right. Tamari and Terry just, uh, and I didn't Defensive expect him to be 100%. Appearance. Number but 25. he doesn't look 100% either. 15 yard yeah, he's missing that six. And an automatic West. first down. There's the penalty. But let's let's take a look at this play again. Watch up the seam. You've got Cam McDonald wide open up the seam. The safety's late to get to the middle of the field, but Jordan Travis goes to the outside. Had an opportunity for a big gain up the seam to his tight end. Well, the penalty helps Florida State. They've only got 22 yards in the second quarter. Travis breaks from the scrum. And in the final 30 seconds, gets knocked out of bounds near another first down for Florida State. That was a Rashad nice play battled. by Jordan Travis. Sorry about that, Wes. It was a nice play by Jordan Travis. He hit the brakes and went back out towards the sideline to stop the clock for his team. Had more room up the middle but is able to get out before, as you said, Rashad Battle gets him out of bounds. Mike Norvell's got one timeout in 26 seconds, and Roddy told you a moment ago that the Knowles will also get the ball to start the second half. So anything here certainly helps. After 21 in a row by Pittsburgh. And Travis got away again. And we'll throw it away, and there's a flag down. And Riley Johnson and his group talk it over. Hold on Florida State. Washington guilty of the hole. It's on the left side of your screen against Phil Campbell, it looks like. No, against oh. Patrick Jones. <laughs> he he uh, got his money's worth on that one. <laughs> Wes, this is about as much six man pressure as I've seen Pitt bring all season. Travis throws and Helton to catch. Keyshawn Helton banged out of bounds near midfield. 13 seconds left. Got half of it back, it looks like. A marker down, too, right there in the area of the hit. I think it's going to be a late hit against DeMar Hamlin. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. catch and right there on the sideline ducks out of bounds and yeah that's going to be called all the time I, I mean he's clearly out of bounds DeMar Hamlin commits to it before he goes out of bounds but still when you're a, a step and a half out of bounds it's going to be called so first and ten ball at the 37 of Pittsburgh Florida State got any late thunder here Travis spins away from Alexander and will get out of bounds around the 34. Well, Pittsburgh's got five sacks in a ball game for the fourth time this year. But, Roddy, they've also missed on two or three more potentially. Yeah, and it was kind of that way against Notre Dame. They had their shots but weren't able to get Ian Book down. And they have not been able to get Jordan Travis. I don't know how many pressures they have. I don't have that in front of me, but it's got to be in the double digits. Jordan Travis did a nice job getting out of a few of them. Not a lot of time left here now. And a timeout. Pittsburgh, 30 second charge timeout. Pittsburgh has taken one of their final two timeouts.
Roddy, you mentioned the pressures. Rocky, what have you seen? Guys, it looks like it's Baby and Johnson, the right guard for Florida State, that's really giving him trouble right now. It's a couple times, two, three times. He's let his man go straight by him. So I'd look for, especially as we get in the second half here, for Pitt to really take advantage and try to get past their Baby and Johnson. They, Florida State's got to find a way to help him. Yeah. That may be some of the reason that, that, they're, that Pitt is starting to put either Rashad Weaver or Patrick Jones sort of as that middle linebacker yeah. so that he can have that inside rush and get matched up on one of those two guards. No, I certainly agree with you. A guard's usually not used to seeing that kind of speed and twitch of a defensive end, so you line him up inside, that's a mismatch. Well, Rashad Weaver, who's as from... As good as Pat Narduzzi has been at any of his stops. <laughs> yeah, well, and he said that to us earlier in the year, didn't he? The, the playmakers he has in Jones and Weaver. Headline his long career. Here's Travis just trying to sneak it. And Florida State, I think, is going to try and see if uh, Parker Grothaus can kick a field goal here to close the half. Trying to get a couple yep. extra yards with the quarterback sneak. Maybe run a little bit of clock off as well to make sure this is the last play of the half. But this is going to be a long attempt for Grothaus. Right around 47 yards. Yep. 48. Yep, 47 is where it looks like they will have Tommy Martin take a knee. Trying to snap a 21 point run here by Pittsburgh at the close of the half. Garrett Murray handles the snap. And that is good. Final play of the half is the third field goal of the year for Grothaus. And the Knowles. Real down one West. Yep. Well, nice they used all the clock, half. right? Yeah, sorry. Sorry for stepping on you there, partner. It was a nice finish of the half for the Knowles. They needed some momentum after having been kept off the scoreboard since their first two drives. Nice way to end. So a seven-point lead for Pat Narduzzi's team. A 21-point run and really a dominant second quarter after some... Early knockout punches were fired by Florida State, and he's with Rocky Boyman. Coach, you guys started off kind of sluggish, then we're able to... Yeah, Rocky, I missed the end of that, but I can read. We just had too many negative plays there in the second quarter and got in some tough situations. Coach, what's the key defensively to shutting down Pitt here in the second half? You know, our guys, uh, like I said, they've been put in some tough situations with field position. You know, we got to go out there and uh, just continue to play, uh, eliminate the big play, you know, continue to stop the run, and try to get some pressure on this quarterback. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, sir. You see Jay Sean Corbin on the kick return and downfield. My goodness. What a cover by Pittsburgh. Looks like Bengali, and Bengali Kamara. Kamara. The huh? yeah. What in the world? <laughs> and, and, and completely legal because he gets him on that shoulder. But wow. What a job. And here is James Blackman, the redshirt junior from South Bay in Glade Central, to replace Jordan Travis. And it's Corbin on the carry. So here is the starter when the year began, Roddy, for the Seminoles and Blackman. Yeah, and a guy that's played a lot of football for Florida State, got thrust into action his true freshman year, has started games each of the last two seasons as well, was starting this season. And interesting they make this move. We'll try and find out if there's anything wrong with Jay Jordan Travis. Well, and Patrick Jones bats down the, the play on second down. Rocky? And guys, I just talked to Florida State sideline, and they did confirm it is an injury to Jordan Travis. That's all the details they would give me. All right. So here is Blackman, who in his 33rd game now is the Seminole quarterback. He's 58% this year, two touchdowns, two interceptions. 
And 350 the yards and passes, passes, so a little bit more of a static target for this the pass rush. Blackman throw is intercepted. DeMar Hamlin's sixth career interception. Turnover dunk for Pitt and James Blackman and Mike Norvell talking about what he saw. Obviously expected one thing, got, an un got another. DeMar Hamlin under the throw that he was trying to make, was trying to go to the, to the comeback right at the sticks. And the veteran safety, DeMar Hamlin, sneaks under it and is able to get the interception. You see James Blackman going there all the way. Hamlin knows where he's going to Tamari on Terry. And it is a pick. Ooh. My goodness. And great field position for Pickett and Davis on the release from the perimeter. Tackle made by Robert Cooper. Wes, I'm not sure what A.J. Davis saw there because it looked like he had a couple of offensive linemen and if he just uses speed to try and get away from those, those defensive tackles, he's got some blockers out front, but you get a look at James Blackman who uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the injury to Jordan Travis, but it looks like it's going to be him all the, the rest of the way. Second down, seven to go. Pickett loads for the end zone and incomplete the flag. Ball intended for Jacques Louis. And it was Asante Samuel, who I believe was in coverage against Shockey. Pass interference. Defense number 26. Automatic first down. Get another look at this. It's the very end. Maybe there was something before him riding Shockey Jacques Louis out of bounds. Hmm. Didn't see anything on the back end of that replay, but Asante Samuel, they finally go at him and they're able to get yeah. a PI. First and goal at the four. Pick it. And this is Vince Davis. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Wow. Two interceptions today for Florida State and two touchdowns off the turnovers for Pittsburgh. The Pitt has not been great at converting their turnovers into touchdowns this season, but that not the case today. This offense has found some life in the run game. They take advantage of not only the turnover, but the turnover, then the penalty, able to run the ball into the end zone. Yep. So off the turnover, less than a minute for the score for Vincent Davis. And now it's two touchdowns again, the margin for Pittsburgh. So Florida State has to go with the backup quarterback. James Blackman comes in and Pitt takes advantage. Damar Hamlin has the interception. You get a pass interference after the turnover dunk. And it turns into a pit touchdown. They extend the lead here in the third. Well, Jordan Travis, who Rocky told you, was banged up and there was an injury concern. And he's out in a hoodie and James Blackman has thrown the pick. Pittsburgh's added a touchdown. And Roddy, let's go back through the turnover here. Well, Pittsburgh plays so much man-to-man -man that I think James Blackman on this one assumed that's what he was going to get. But with the blitz, they decide to play three deep, two under. Damar Hamlin just sneaks under the comeback route and picks that off. But that's a great job of Pittsburgh. Mixing up their coverages, making it look like man, making you assume man, going zone, and a great play by a veteran safety. And here comes 6'2", 212-pound freshman Chubba Purdy from Queen Creek, Arizona, who played two weeks ago at Louisville late and was 0 for 9. He's got Sheffield in the ball game in front of him, and he runs with it a little bit too. Not much there, but he runs with it. Well, Chubba Purdy was a big time recruit, originally committed to Louisville, and then decided once Mike Norvell came to Florida State, based on their prior relationship, Mike Norvell recruited his brother Brock Purdy, the starting quarterback at Iowa State. 
So the family had a relationship, decides to come to FSU. And that over nine last week was a little misleading. There we go, second down throw. And the catch made by McDonald into the bench area. And a flag has been thrown. And two flags have been thrown. And these are usually in the department of late hit. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number five, 50 yards Italy, automatic first down. Deslin Alexander. And, and Wes, the, the, reason, the reason I said that 0 for 9 was a little misleading as you get a look at the late hit, he's kind of pushing the quarterback, but, but I guess that's going to be called nowadays. The reason I said that was a little misleading, that 0 for 9, is because Florida State dropped about three of those, and a couple of them were back shoulder passes that were 50-50 balls that they weren't able to come down with. I actually thought Chubba Purdy, uh, all things considered, played pretty well a week ago and deserved some playing time this week as well particularly with the injury to jordan travis so here is purdy on a fresh set of downs following the penalty out near the 45. throw is low gathered by Keyshawn helton and then demar hamlin and alexander were both there for pittsburgh and another flag has been thrown this time on the tackle by hamlin i believe After the play was over, a sportsmanlike conduct, defense number six, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down, and that is number six first, unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Number six would be John Morgan, and I didn't see him around the ball there, Roddy. No, I didn't either. Let's see, Tamar Hamlin gets up. Oh, I yeah, actually think it yeah. may have been on. <laughs> is that Deslin Alexander? Well, he's Either on Deslin the ground. Alexander of De so Deslin Alexander looked like he may have had a little jab to one of the other players, but DeMar Hamlin was the one that was talking to the referee. Yeah, Alexander wears five, and now Purdy being flushed. Weaver got back there, and then Alexander chased him, and a ball that was thrown away. Purdy's running for his life here, fellas. And almost Pittsburgh intercepted. Once, yeah, Pittsburgh once again getting after the quarterback. And, and Chubba Purdy is seeing what Jordan Travis saw. All that's that late in that second quarter. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh left a man open. They flip it out, and this is Webb. Fighting toward the 40 of the Panthers. You see Chase Pine, the linebacker there for Pittsburgh, helping with the tackle. Uh, I was a little surprised that, that we did not see more of this from Florida State in the first half. The screen game, uh, Mike Norvell always has an extensive screen package from his back to his days at Memphis. Has not run it as much this season, but I thought we would see a little bit more of it. And Kenny Dillingham said as much. And they try and run it with Webb. And again, Chase Pine makes the stop. Rocky, when they run the ball, are they trying to take a little starch out of the pass rush this way? I, I think that's absolutely what they're doing. They just cannot allow for Pitt to just pin their ears back and rush all the time. So if they can have a little bit of balance in the run, that'll maybe slow that rush down a bit. Ooh. Here's Purdy now, first And Chubba inside the 29 goes Purdy. Holding offense number 55, 10 yard penalty, first down. Penalty on Dante Lucas. And these defensive linemen for Pitt have, haven't been getting pressure. They've been getting calls. Seen a number of holding penalties and with the number of bodies that they're sending and the number of different bodies that they're sending at this offensive line of Florida State. And it's been a it's been a tough night for this offensive line. The other thing too, 
Roddy. It looks like that Pittsburgh has found whatever it was that they didn't have much of in the last four ball games prior to the bye week, and now Pittsburgh a timeout, timeout taken by Pat first Narduzzi. Maybe it was the Woods interception in the first half, which we talked about swung momentum, but Pat Narduzzi's team has been back to the shop the rest of the night. Something like that. That's going to be my guess, 73. 73? That's my okay. guess. We'll let, we'll let Rocky Boyman maybe offer a <laughs> answer as well since yours is wrong. And we oh, got a little thanks, movement. I, and I, I think this is on Florida State, by the way. Ball start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty. It's First down. Darius Washington at left tackle. Wes, I'll go ahead and throw out 77. Oh, there you go. Do I get a second guess? No. Oh, okay. No, we got we got Rocky. Rocky. Rocky said 77, and Rocky's closer than Roddy. All right. I'm gonna in, go the, 78. in the correct answer. I'm gonna go 78 oh, really? on my second. Now, guess. now we're just now we're just dealing in inches Throwing and darts. cutting each other. Yeah. <laughs> that ball is caught and banged out of bounds on the far sideline. Is uh, is that Helton? Yes. No, I'm sorry. It's not Keyshawn Helton. It's uh, Toa Feely, the uh, freshman from St. Pete, and he will swap out for second and 29. Mm -hmm. Wow. They were tr trying to catch Pitt in the blitz, and question is, what do you go with on second and 29? Uh, if I were Florida State, you try and hit something out towards the sideline, maybe, and claw back 10 yards or so, so you can make it third and somewhat manageable. Yep. Here comes the pressure again. Purdy being flushed around. Pine had him, lost him. And then the rest of the Panthers arrived. Devin Danielson had him below the waist around the 40. And Chuba is seeing exactly what Jordan Travis and even in a limited appearance James Blackman has seen tonight all pressure all the time and it's amazing that he escapes the first one but you know, Rocky talked about this earlier they this pit defense rallies to the football always has jerseys around and now it's third and 36 Wow quick throw on the perimeter Wilson trying to make something happen in space and He'll be helped out of bounds by Brandon Hill, who's starting for Paris Ford tonight. Fortunate he was cl that close to the sideline because Brandon Hill knocked the ball out. It's exactly what the referee was saying. Ball was fumbled forward out of bounds, brought back to the spot of the fumble to make it uh, fourth and a short bus ride. <laughs> And here is, we have two Aust Australian putters, Alex Mastromano, who's from Melbourne, another one of the pro kick Australia guys, although he's actually got a rules football background. He played for Collingwood in the Australian Premier League. And Turner from the 11 will work his way back to the 19. All right, so you guys have sample to guess and with 807 to go in the third how about let's get an answer in tonight's uh -huh. trivia question what was the year that pittsburgh and florida state last played in tallahassee 1982 the panthers won 37 to 17 at dope campbell stadium a night where ironically they had a lot of rain rocky I was, didn't I was just, start that way. It didn't. I was just going to ask, was Roddy Jones alive in 1982? <laughs> that would be a negatory. Right here. <laughs> here's, here's a block punt. Al Lowry recovers for the touchdown. And then Dan Marino <laughs> threw a touchdown to the late John Brown to seal it as Vincent Davis got hit by McClendon in the backfield on first down. I love seeing those old videos of Dan Marino, though. The torrential downpour. It's awesome. Pittsburgh off their 19. Jacques Louis on second and 12. It'll be third and 11. Not much there. 
I cannot tell you how disappointed I am. There's no highlight of Julius Dawkins available from that 1982 game. Panther wide receiver was one of my favorite players of those early 80s Pittsburgh teams. Third and long. Pick it. Bum ankle it all. Cannot slip away from Fabian Lovett, the transfer from Mississippi State. Well, Fabian Lovett gets the sack, or at least the tackle, but it was Josh Kane, though, that made this play. Forced Kenny Pickett off this spot, up in the pocket. Watch him come off the left side. This is the type of pass rush potential that Josh Kando has coming off the edge. You get the big fella, the six foot seven, 265 pound defensive end, Joshua Kando, absolutely wreaking havoc off that edge. Third time Pittsburgh has gone three and out tonight. Fourth and 14, and Florida State. We'll watch this ball hit and bounce away from Asante Samuel Jr. Great Pittsburgh player of the past. We lost him a couple of years ago. As you see, Chubba Purdy try to get started with Rashad Weaver ultimately making the stop on the young man. All right, no, Florida State, third quarterback of the night, Rocky. Two mobile guys. Blackman only in for three snaps through the pick to Hamlin. But clearly the Knowles are at their best when Kenny Dillingham's offense has a mobile guy at the call right no question about that but I'm gonna go back to what Roddy said earlier about the screen game that's how you slow down a rush is they're humping off the edge there you just dump that ball over top of them the problem Wes is they've been second 28 third and 36 where a screen or a draw is ineffective yeah yeah and this is one of those situations Rocky here in third and seven it's gonna allow Pitt to get in their exotic third down package you're gonna see three down line and six guys threatening the blitz and Pitt has sent all six at times they've also only sent yep. four at times and Florida State has had a tough time figuring out who's coming in these situations so here is Purdy on the third and seven two touchdown difference and that's McDonald the tight end to the 45 and a first down this is one of the first snaps of two high safeties that we've seen from Pitt. And McDonald finds a soft spot in the zone. Chubba Purdy finds him. Nice completion, third down conversion. Yep. Purdy trying to get that ground game going. Jay Sean Corbin toward midfield. And Pittsburgh is. David Green, who had not played the last couple ball games, got in on the stop there. He's back playing in that defensive tackle technique. Oh, there's one thrown on the perimeter to Helton, and he's met right away by Hallett. Good ball game tonight for Eric Hallett, Roddy. Yeah, I thought he's done a nice job. The guy that you'll see at safety and corner. He's done a really nice job in coverage. This time he's mm. physical. And if you're Jordan Young, you've got to go meet force with force. I mean, Hallett is coming strong. You've got to go meet him with some force to protect your, your wide receiver out there. I mean, you guys sit in the same meeting rooms, you eat the same meals together. You got to watch out for your boy. Yeah. Well, the Panther defense, which, you know, after a hot start where they went 3-0, and they had lost four straight. As you see, uh, Devin Danielson being tended to by the Pittsburgh medical folks. The... Uh, the idea of what they are defensively tonight, Roddy, is probably a nice return to what a lot of Panther fans saw in the first three ball games of the year. Yeah, they have gotten after the quarterback. You saw the early interception on the miscommunication by A.J. Woods and harassed FSU's quarterback, whoever the snap taker has been. It forced a number of turnovers. But the big thing is the pressure. I mean, they have not felt threatened, and then they send pressure on James Blackman, mix up the coverage on him, and DeMar Hamlin gets the interception. There's been a lot of turnover dunks here today for this hit defense. Well, and they've done a great job, not only sacks, tackles for loss, but you take out that Jordan Travis touchdown run in the first half, and Florida State only averaged two yards per carry on the ground. 
Yeah, and even when you adjust that for sacks in Florida State, you take out the 80-yard touchdown run, they've got 110 yards rushing for the game. So here's the third and eight for Purdy. Pressure coming and almost intercepted. Hamlin had one teed right up on a ball intended for Jordan Young. And Chubba Purdy makes the right read here. He makes it at the right time. He's just got no time. I mean, right up the middle, Savassier Dennis has a running start. He's not able to make an accurate throw. And Jordan Young actually saves an interception by getting a hand on that. Yep. So Mike Norvell will talk with his freshman. And here is Master Mono to punt to D.J. Turner. And Turner to his left will field it on the fly around the 10. And back across the 20 before he is stacked up. Well, it's been seven years since Pittsburgh and Florida State played. Last time they did, it was Pittsburgh's first ever game as a member of the ACC. And it was the first ever game for a guy from Bessemer, Alabama named Jameis Winston, Roddy. Yeah, I remember this game after he breaks out. Everybody had to go and figure out how to pronounce Jameis. He made sure everybody knew by the end of that year exactly who he was on his way to be the number one overall pick a week ago. And Wes, honestly, like, we have talked about this a number of times. I know I'm just piling on at this point, but it is absolutely crazy that these two teams have not played since 2013. I, I agree with you. Here's Turner on a sweep. Got away from one and will end up running about 25 yards to get one yard. And, and here, here's my last thing on the schedule. Like, right. Here's my last thing on the schedule. I, our, our, our crew's probably going to laugh because they didn't know what to get for. Look at how many pit players have never played Florida State. With your whole career with never playing Florida State, one of the premier brands in this conference. It's a disservice to all of those guys not being able to see every team in the league at least once before they get out. Yeah, good point. Here's Pickett, who's 17 to 23 tonight, and there's his 18th completion of the evening, and it's for Jordan Addison and a first down. Or close to the first down, I should say. Third you know, three when, coming up. When we got word that Kenny Pickett was going to play today, uh, we talked about how tough this guy is. Uh, when you talk about the city of Pittsburgh, it is a blue-collar city with a workman's attitude that is built off toughness. Pat Narduzzi is built on toughness, and he absolutely loves this quarterback. What a gritty performance from Kenny Pickett on a bum ankle here today. Third down and three, and a quick throw, and it's caught, and Trey tipped him back to work again, or Jared Wayne. Jared Wayne in the first down to the 45. Wayne had a big catch early. That one is 17 yards. They go to the tight formation that we've seen a number of times during the game. It's a quick out to Jared Wayne, and he is a part of a really talented group. We've called Jordan Addison's name the most here today, but Jared Wayne, six foot three, 195 pounds, is a really nice target for Kenny Pickett as well. Yep. Two touchdown lead. We approach two minutes to play in quarter three. Back to the ground they go, and this is A.J. Davis. Rocky, the, the toughness of a kid like Kenny Pickett on full display tonight. You know, as Roddy said, we weren't sure what we'd get from a mobility standpoint, but from a leadership standpoint, it's been second to none. Well, there's no question about it. I talked to Pat Narduzzi before the game, and that's the word he kept saying. He said, man, that kid is tough. I mean, look, on Monday of this week, Pickett was not able to run on this ankle. I mean, talk about, you know, all he's had to do to get to this point, and he's really rallying the rest of his troops here. And here is Davis and A.J. inside the 40 and down to the 33 of Florida State on a second and seven play on the ground. The other thing about tonight is Pickett has also been a guy who has seemingly also sparked the run game tonight. Well, this offensive line, Rocky said it earlier, is probably the best game that they've played all season long. You saw Bryce Hargrove, the guard, and Jake Cradle, the guard, split the two 
defensive tackles. Jimmy Morrissey gets up on Stephen Dix, the linebacker, and A.J. Davis able to rumble down the middle of the field. Yep. First and 10. And here is Vincent Davis. They swap 21 for 22. And another nice run inside the 25 and a first down. The exact same call. Florida State slants the front. You're able to gash him again. Pitt's had a lot of success running the ball to that boundary side over the course of this one. Here's Pickett up in the pocket, escapes to the far side, and will dive mm. to the 18-yard line. <laughs> And I have to think, guys, if his, that ankle was healthy, he might have scrambled for another six or eight yards. <laughs> I agree with you there. Yeah, and, and that's what happens when you have uh, an injured ankle. The initial burst is typically there, but when you want that second gear when you're asked right. for it, you just got no push. <laughs> so you got to dive. Well, the only score in the third came off an interception by DeMar Hamlin, and Pittsburgh held serve. We go to the final 15 at Doe Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. Panthers with a two touchdown lead, 31-17. Two touchdown lead for Pittsburgh. We go to the fourth and final quarter of play with Roddy Jones, Rocky Boyman, our ACC network crew, West Durham. Pittsburgh goes to work and Kenny Pickett tried to Fish one inside to Jordan Addison and Daenerys, Daenerys Robinson right there. For, for a wide receiver, when you practice those and that play is called, you are just praying that the giant defensive end falls for it or gets blocked. And that time he didn't yep. and was able to stop him behind the line of scrimmage. Third down and seven. Pick it. Here's Addison on the catch. He'll squeeze inside to the five and reach for the end zone and the Pittsburgh touchdown. The freshman scores on the Kenny Pickett throw to extend the Pittsburgh lead. How good has this guy been this year? I mean, catching the ball deep, yards after catch, able to find soft spots in the zone, his feel, his physical talents. Jordan Addison has been incredible for this pit team and how about kenny pickett staring down in the barrel of a blitz finding his receiver and delivering an accurate ball 11 catches 128 for jordan addison 11 is a season high in terms of receptions the 128 his second highest since he had 147 in the loss at miami and we've paused for review here, and I think it's whether or not Addison broke the plane. Uh, Roddy, he's now had seven or more catches in six games this season. All right, we're going to get another look at this. He goes down, knee is down. Ball on the white, isn't it? And, uh, well, the, the, our angle is, it's at slightly, our, our view is slightly <laughs> at an angle, so. Right. I think it's on the white. I, I I don't know that there's indisputable video evidence that you can overturn. Right. At least from the looks that we've seen so far. If it's not about a, a freshman coming in and well, making a, a, an impact. Yeah. With with the losses that they had at receiver, with Maurice French leaving, you needed a guy with the amount that Pitt throws the football to become the volume receiver. And Jordan Addison certainly has been that. Tell you what, he, he made a lot of midseason ACC Offensive Rookie of the Years, too, you know? I know one guy who's rooting for it to be declared not a touchdown. It's Nick Patty. He wants he wants to he wants the bolt to another touchdown. <laughs> the back of quarterback. You say that. Oh come on. <laughs> Been the touchdown vulture today. Kenny Pickett, by the way, if this stands, 20 of 26, 207. Well, it has Even been a pretty long see. discussion, Wes, which makes me think that that it's going to be brought back, that they're going to rule that there was 
indisputable video evidence that he was short, but right. And Riley Johnson, they're getting a lot of facts and filaments put together. And Pat Narduzzi. After review, not going to be Runner's happy. knee, leg, and hand was down before the ball broke the plane of the goal line. So the ruling on the field, it's going to be the ball just short of the goal line, first down. <laughs> the coach says it all. I mean, I, I, I kind of agree with them. Off the, off the views that we saw, I don't know, because you don't have the shot showing the ball completely short, you and I said it. I mean, it looks like it's, it's probably over the plane, but uh, they saw it a different way. And guess who's in, Wes? Guess who's in a quarterback? Nick Patty. Nick Patty. And Florida State stacked him up right at the line. So he's not quite able to steal it just yet. Looks like they gave him one shot. If I'm, if I'm pit, I'm not sure you just don't quarterback sneak it three or four times and see if Florida State can't stop you every single time. When you've got less than three feet to go, the offensive line's been playing well. Be interested to see if they give Nick Patty another shot. Patty one more time. And he got turned back that time again. Those big guys in the middle for Florida State doing a good job of getting low and creating a pile. Nick Patty was stopped again. Emmett Rice will get credit for the first. Now you've got now you, they've taken out some of the beef. They've got the receivers in. They're going to go five wide. We've seen this look a number of times with Nick Patty, and it's been quarterback run all the way. Let's see if they go to it again. Third and goal. Patty will keep it again, and he does not get it. Kane does in there. Steven Dix, the linebacker. Love it. Now what do you do on fourth and goal? Uh, I would go for it. You're on the one foot line or just shy of just ahead of the one yard line i'd go for it try and put this thing away but pat narduzzi is sending out the field goal team so a two touchdown advantage with 12 27 to play and kessman to try a 19 yarder And a penalty. Ball start. Offense number 71. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Bryce Hargrove, the second most experienced of that front, only trailing Jimmy Morrissey, who starts for the 44th time in his Pittsburgh career tonight. Hargrove, 24th start. And West, that well, pushes it back to Alex Kessman. Yeah, because of the angle, you're not on that one-yard line. Yeah, and, and Florida State's going to decline him because it's an easier field goal backed up five yards. Yep. Although, I mean, if I'm Mike Norvell, you're you're playing with Pitt, then deciding to go for it, but it looks like Pat Narduzzi content to kick the field goal. Mm -hmm. So off the one, here's Kessman. Narrow try from left to right. And he banks it through. So the Knowles saved the touchdown, but concede the field goal of 19 yards, Roddy. Well, it was the third down play to Jordan Addison that got him down. Kenny Pickett staring down the barrel of a blitz, delivering the ball to his true freshman. It's originally called a touchdown, but over time, ends up being a big play for Florida State. Florida State takes four points off the board by stopping him inside the one yard line a defense fired up giving him a chance 34 17 the Panthers have doubled the Knowles with about three minutes gone here in the fourth period of play and Florida State will start off its 25 after the fair catch call don't forget that every Saturday during the football season on ACC Network our coverage starts at 10 a.m. with the huddle Jordan Cornette, 
St. X, Notre Dame, with E.J. Manuel, Eric McLean, Mark Rick. Bring you all the details, information, and previews prior to kickoff on another full day of ACC football. Starts 10 a.m. each Saturday right here on ACC Network. Off the 25, Purdy. Here in the fourth. Quick throw, this is McDonald. And knocked out of bounds after a gain of about five. Now, Cameron McDonald, you know, a lot of guys go through the spring and the quarantine, the pandemic, and, you know, read a lot of books, do things like that. Cameron McDonald might have uh, might have helped his own value in a way that not many others did. I'll tell you about that in a moment. There is Purdy. And LaDamian Webb to the 30. It'll be third down. So, Roddy, you know, what'd you do? Pick up books, you know, things like that. Rocky, you know, you might have, you know, taken up something. <laughs> what did Cameron McDonald do? He became a certified yoga instructor. And here he is leading. Spent 200 hours becoming a certified yoga instructor. Third and five, and Purdy trying to oh, 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 knocked out of bounds on the hit by Chase Pine, and I think he got it aviation style. That's one of those plays, Wes, where even if he didn't get it, you give him because of the effort see the young man and we've seen the athletic ability gets around hobble ball Donato and as he gets close decides to elevate over a standing defender what a play for the young freshman jumping over Chase Pine I mean, Chase Pine's 6'2 now that's not that's not a that's not a low low bar that he cleared sir fire up this crowd here guys wow yeah well ball at the 36 first and 10 just ahead of 10 minutes to play Purdy trying to give Norvell's team a spark, trailing 17. And he'll be sacked. And that's Rashad Weaver. Seven sacks tonight for Pittsburgh. And Weaver, who's from Cooper City, Florida, and I'm sure he's got some folks here, enjoyed that one. Yeah, he's up against the freshman, Robert Scott, who's done a pretty nice job this season getting the call as a true freshman but weaver too good i mean this is a guy that's going to hear his name called pretty early in next year's draft Ooh. second and 17 and it's almost intercepted hamblin has found his way to the football tonight on several occasions Wes, this is the second time that Damar Hamlin looks like he was standing in the FSU huddle when right. the play was called. I mean, just diagnoses it. They're trying to throw the ball quick to a receiver on a little smoke screen, and Damar Hamlin right behind him, or right in front of him, almost picked that off. Looked like the freshman Brian Robinson was the intended receiver. Here's Purdy giving ground from the start, and got it to Webb. And LaDamian Webb with a flag thrown. Skips out of bounds at the 32. And let's check the marker here. And it's a hold on Florida State. Pat Narduzzi, I think, wants to know down in distance here. Illegal block in the back by number 88 of the offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Kentron Portier on the infraction. Florida State will punt. And Alex Mastromano on to handle that. Mastromano. Guys on the line for 
pit. And here's DJ Turner at the 20. Goes boundary side and will step out at the 24. Under nine to go in the ball game. On the backs of what you, that pit defense has done, as you said. Ball on the 25 and a <laughs> whistle stops play on first down. Ball Vincent start. Davis, the Offense. carry. Number seven, five yard penalty. First down. It's on DJ Turner, who, by the way, was a transfer when the Big Ten said they weren't going to play and arrived on the Pittsburgh campus. Rocky with about, oh, I don't know, 10, 12 days to go before the season started. <laughs> and uh, he's turned out to be a very important player at eight catches for 186 against NC State and has contributed here again tonight. If there's one thing 2020 has taught us, it's Ooh. weird and you better be adaptable. You better be able to oh. roll the punches. <laughs> yeah, tell me. Here is uh, Davis trying to get started. The other thing it's taught us, gentlemen, is the transactive nature of college football. Just look across the rosters tonight. You got guys that have made either grad moves or, in the case of Turner, made a move when at one point you thought your league wasn't going to play. Yeah, we've had a couple of those in the ACC. Tony Poljan at Virginia yep. transferred from Central Michigan. You've got DJ Turner here. And we kind of had that a little bit this week. Rocky Boyman got the late call to come and join That's us with. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Rocky Boyman was in a transaction. <laughs> Found out late After, Thursday. <laughs> yeah, had some action, and now all of a sudden he's doing ACC. So, probably canceled a party with family and friends tonight to watch the Irish and the Tigers. <laughs> probably had to return a lot of chairs and tables. Oh, and I had a band coming over. He had the See, again. Home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally, totally torched her social calendar. Third and 12 coming up. Under eight to go. And in these situations, Kenny Pickett has found Jordan Addison consistently. He's going to be, it's like in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Wherever number three goes, that's where Kenny Pickett's eyes are going to go. Play fake, Pickett, backside throw, and Trey Tipton, second catch of the ball game. I, I got to be honest, Roddy, I'm, the way they've expanded, Taysir Max not here, uh, Crawl Kerrigan, their tight ends are out. I, I'm impressed with the way Mark Whipple, the offensive coordinator who you see there with Pickett, that during the bye week, they've, they've expanded the throw game to include a lot of different guys now. Just not Jordan Addison, who, by the way, came in at double the number of catches of the next guy. Yeah, well, I mean, well, Mark it, Whipple it, told us. With, with, with the number of receivers that they have that are talented, he named Jared Wayne, Trey Tipton, DJ Turner, Jordan Addison, Shockey Jock Louis. We may see more four receiver sets. Here's Asante Samuel waiting and will field the punt at the 30. 6.40 to go in Tallahassee. James Blackman came in, obviously only, only had a handful of plays, but going with Purdy here, I like the move. He seems to be the guy that's going to duke it out with Jordan Travis down the line. I and mean, he's a big time recruit, didn't get the opportunity in the preseason because he basically broke his collarbone early in the first scrimmage they had. So Mark Norvell said really last week was his first opportunity for game reps. Let's get a look at all the different faces that we've seen for quarter at quarterback for the for the Seminoles. Yep. Here's Purdy on second and ten. Sheffield in the back to help with the block and intercepted. And that is Brandon Hill to the house. How about that? How about the, the leadership there by DeMar Hamlin? I mean, Brandon Hill was looking to toss that ball into the stands. And DeMar Hamlin, the leader in the secondary, comes up and says, no, 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 no. We don't do that. We go to the turnover dunk. We've talked about, we talked about Brandon Hill early in this game. We have not talked about how much better he has been since that uh, early run by Jordan Travis. Flag here on the play. See what Riley Johnson has. There are two fouls on the play. One during the play, one after. Personal foul, targeting defense number 32. 
After the play was over, uh, late hit, dead ball, or unsportsmanlike conduct against the scoring team, that foul of targeting is under further review. All right, so Servassier Dennis is the one for the targeting. We're going to take a timeout. Brandon. Against the scoring team, Pittsburgh, number nine. That foul will be carried over and administered on the kickoff. And that is number nine's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. So the Servassier Dennis targeting call. Uh, well, here's first of all, Brandon Hill has the third interception of the night for Pittsburgh, which gives him 11 on the year that leads the country. Gentlemen. Yes, it does. And Trevor Purdy doesn't see Brandon Hill in the middle of the field. And then you get the unsportsmanlike conduct from Brandon Hill for trying to throw the ball into the stands. DeMar Hamlin got there a little too, a little too slowly. So, Servassier Dennis does not pick up the targeting, which also would have eliminated him from the first half of Georgia Tech next week. Rocky, Roddy, what do you think? Well, I, I think it's a good call because there's no indicator. There's no lowering of the helmet. There's no launch. There's no thrust from a crouch. He didn't lead with that helmet. He hits him with the shoulder now, but there's no indicator of targeting. And I know, Rocky, you were happy to hear that. No, I, I think it's a great, great call on your behalf there, Roddy. It does. It has to have something like a thrust, an upward motion, something like that in order for it to be targeting. But outside of that, guys, let, let's revisit the fact how good this secondary has played without Paris Ford. He's been their leader, their best defensive player, opted out kind of out of the blue here this week, kind of threw that back end in a little bit of a tailspin. They've come out tonight and really responded. Well, you're, you know you're why exactly they were right, excited Rocky. to see Brandon Hill, too, guys. Y yeah, the, look, we, we talked about Brandon Hill early on because of that missed tackle on Jordan Travis that allowed the long touchdown run. We haven't mentioned his name much since, and it's because he's been in the right position to prevent throws and played really well on the back end and let that front get after the quarterbacks of Florida State. So Brandon Hill is going to look at that play as one that he'd like back, but he's played a really good game today. Yep. And the return back to about the 26-yard line from our 36-yard line from Ja'Kai Douglas. And a quick reminder to you that Sunday, best day, is championship day tomorrow. At noon, second seed Carolina, top seed Louisville, the ACC Field Hockey Championship right here on ACC Network streaming live on the ESPN app. Remember now, Louisville won the regular season matchup, snapped North Carolina's long winning streak. Tar Heels will be out for revenge and to win the conference title. Pat Narduzzi trying to snap a four-game skid here tonight. It's got to feel pretty good with 6.19 to go. And now we get a whistle. Delay a game. Offense. And delay a game Roger, is the call first down. against the Knowles. It, and Mike Norvell yesterday, Roddy, and you mentioned this earlier, in our visit said, in order for us to be good, we're going to have to go to the bottom and return. And here's a throw out on the perimeter. And... <laughs> That is uh, Toa Feely. It'll be second down. But when he said it yesterday, it kind of was like, whoa. I mean, he knows exactly what the map is here. And I don't know if they've gotten there yet. I don't know where he is in the journey. But he fully comprehends kind of what this is going to have to be for Florida State to get back to being what a lot of people think Florida State can be. Yeah, McDonald and, and, pushed and, out of bounds, third down. And, and in talking to the coaching staff, there there is a a certain understanding that their their expectations have to be taught, and they have to be taught day in and day out. It doesn't just happen overnight, because you can talk about it for a week, two weeks, three weeks, but if guys aren't used to it on a day in day out basis, then you regress at times, and that's a little bit of what Florida State has gone through this season. So it, it's been a it's been a struggle certainly, and there's certain parts of this team, offensive line being one, that need to be rebuilt from the ground up. 
Here's Purdy, third down against the pressure. And Toa Feely's going to pick up the first down. Rocky, the other thing was when Kenny Dillingham said, you know, we coach these guys, and we have to be willing to make our mistakes and tell them we made the mistake in what we did to try and get it right going forward. I thought that was pretty revealing as well. No, you're absolutely right there, but my favorite quote from Norvell this week was when he said, sustained success requires discipline, right? Think back to the UNC game. They win that game. Oh, my God, we're back. We're back. Well, then they came out the next week and looked totally flat there. They got to realize this is going to take a while. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah, and remember, a note about his roster as we see Purdy, the freshman, is the third quarterback of the night. 73% of this roster is freshman and sophomore. Wow. Only Oregon has a higher percentage, and it's not that much higher. It's 74%. I mean, you talk about being dealt cards when guys take over jobs. There are not a lot of high cards for Mike Norvell to play. Yeah, Marvin Wilson, Tamari and Terry, Asante Samuel. They're, you know, Joshua Kando, Janarius Robinson. They're talented, talented guys. But... This is a long runway on this deal, I feel. And, and somewhere along the way, Rocky and Roddy, that's, that's, been, that's not been understood by a lot of folks, I don't think. Uh, yeah, and let me add here, Wes. To me, the number one thing that has to happen is Norvell has to rebuild this offensive line. This offensive line has been subpar for probably four years. They've not recruited well at the position. If this, for this team to get back, for the Seminoles to be back to what we're used to seeing, this offensive line has got to get much, much better. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think a lot of the growth too is going to come from from continuity in the coaching staff. I mean, think, and Mike Norvell pointed this out. Think about all the different languages and techniques the offense has had to learn through four different play callers the last four seasons. Think of yeah. all the different languages and techniques the defense has had to learn through three different coordinators over the past three seasons, over the past four seasons. When you have that type of turnover for college students, and we're not talking about pros that can dedicate, you know, unlimited hours to learning what these offenses and defenses entail, and that's hard for these guys. So some of that is going to come from just the overall consistency of this coaching staff being there every day. Right, that's a great point. I mean, in the, at the NFL level, the Browns, right? They, how many years in a row have they changed coordinators and coaches? And, yeah. and to your point, these are college kids, right? Every, they're trying, the, the terminology's changing, the philosophy's changing. So I think Mike Norvell is going to be here for the long haul and really get to establish what he wants to do. Yeah, they punted away to Pittsburgh, four minutes and change to go. By the way, coming up tonight, the huddle after dark. Around 11 o'clock following Notre Dame Clemson, as they like to say in the business on another network, Jordan Cornett, E.J. Manuel, Eric McLean, Mark Rick breaks down the full day in the ACC, including postgame thoughts on the Tigers and Irish tonight from South Bend. And Pittsburgh is 4.05 away from posting their fourth win of the year and their third in the ACC. And Panthers running the rock with Daniel Carter, 220-pound redshirt freshman from St. Thomas Aquinas. All right, Rocky, give me the thumbnail for the Irish to pull the upset tonight. It's the offensive line. The offensive line for Notre Dame, I think, is the best in the country. Clemson's defensive line a little bit nicked up. I, I think that's the advantage right there. They got to ride it. Ian Book just can't turn the ball over. Joey Yellen in at quarterback. Now the young man who started a couple of ball games from Mission Viejo, California. And here in the final 320, Yellen gets some snaps. And that's Izzy Abanacanda on the carry for Mark Whipple's offense. Roddy, give me the thumbnail. Clemson wins tonight by putting it in whose hands? Travis Nine. Etienne? Nine, Nine. number nine, <laughs> early and often. And if it doesn't work in the run game, throw it to him. If it doesn't work in the run game or the throw game, let him return kicks. Get the ball in his hands over wow. and over and over. Do you worry, though, about the missing pieces on the Tiger defense tonight? Absolutely. I, I'm, 
I, I think Rocky was spot on oh, that offensive yeah. line and I'll add the tight ends as well they're gonna play with three tight ends in this game a lot I would expect you're gonna try and play make Clemson play big because they've got two linebackers out James Skalski and and Mike Jones you've got two big time defensive pieces Xavier Thomas and Tyler Davis Xavier Thomas being out for the first half so depth early is gonna be a question for Clemson in a game that's gonna kick off here shortly yeah yeah, you're right. First and ten for Pittsburgh with 225 to go. The Panthers who've won three of the last four in this series. And a big hit there as Abanacanda got turned around at the third at the 25. Florida, Florida State, by the way, is headed to Raleigh next Saturday. Pittsburgh to Atlanta. Both of them play at night on the road next week. And the Knowles going to fall to one and five in the league, two and five overall, and Pitt's going to level out overall and be three and four. And this has got to feel good for the Pittsburgh Panthers because after taking those early, the early waves of momentum from Florida State, their defense was fantastic. They gave yeah. up a few big plays early, especially the long run to Jordan Travis. But that's what happens when you play this style of defense. You play close, you play tight, you play man to man. Sometimes you give up big plays. But this defense, once they settle down, it's the pit defense we expected to see. Yeah. And the one that Roddy been missing for four games yep. in some ways. Well, the, the offense hasn't helped them, and they were up against a couple of, of defenses on the other side in Miami and Notre Dame. But without Kenny Pickett, the offense struggled a little bit. But you're right, Wes. Like, Miami and Notre Dame both hit big plays down the field on Pitt, and this secondary really held up today. Yeah, especially after Travis threw a knockout punch on the 88-yard touchdown run. And a Banacanda, young freshman from Abraham Lincoln High School in Brooklyn. We'll make it second down. Well, there's the tough guy. Pat Narduzzi said he's a tough guy. He proved it. Kenny Pickett did, Rocky. He, he really did. A gutsy performance. I really think that just helped the emotion level of this team. But, look, they were able to win today and really run the ball without Pickett being a part of the run game. I think that's something, a positive they can bring into next week. That'll be the final play of the game as Carter reaches the 45 and Pittsburgh will reach their fourth win and their third in the ACC, Roddy. Impressive effort by the Panthers. It, it really was, and I think Rocky said it early, this sideline was a little deflated, but it was the big play by A.J. Woods, the interception that got them going in the right direction. They never gave up the momentum after that. You can't say enough about the performance of this defense and the performance of this quarterback. I mean, Kenny Pickett is a guy that you root for, and the toughness he showed today was absolutely stellar. Yep. Panthers are moving to 4-4, four and 3-4 four, and four in the ACC. They run the ball for 148 yards tonight.